Hello, I'm Katherine Comden, Behavior Program Manager at Willamette Humane Society in Salem, Oregon. Have you ever had a pet with a serious injury and wished that you had a choice for local options beyond what your regular veterinarian might be able to provide? Physical rehabilitation, including laser and hydrotherapy, exercise and electrical stimulation therapy, can improve your pet's return to a normal active life. Specialists from Salem, Oregon, Animal Rehabilitation will be here today to tell us more and show you how to improve the health of your companion animals on this week's Pets and People. We're here today with Salem, Oregon Animal Rehabilitation Specialist, Dr. Julie Rowley, veterinarian, and Sarah Ostrin, veterinary technician. And I'm excited that you're here on the show. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having, Thank us. You for having us. And you yeah. brought a special guest, Zeke, who okay. is our dog model for all the things rehabilitation that we're going to talk about. Okay. So thanks for coming. And tell us why rehab? Why, what is it that brought you into rehab? And why should we be interested in that for our pets? So rehab is a form of physical therapy. We don't call it physical therapy because that is a copyrighted term by human uh, physical therapists. So okay. we call it small animal rehabilitation or okay. just rehabilitation. Um, rehabilitation has so many facets. It can be used for injury prevention, injury recovery, uh, osteoarthritis or older dogs, neuropathies, dachshunds that have had back surgeries or dogs that like diabetics who have diabetic neuropathies. They get them just like people. Um, or we can use it for conditioning for sporting dogs to make them faster, make them stronger, make them more agile so that they can compete even better. Yeah, I think that's likely to get injured. Perfect. Yes, I was going to say, I think, I think that's where one. I've heard about it is in the performance circles, right? People with agility yep. and, and rally and freestyle doing all the really active things with their dogs. And, and they're the ones that are, you know, saying, well, my dog's, you know, seeing a, a rehabilitation therapist to get over whatever. But really, it's for everybody, mm -hmm. for everybody's oh, yeah. pets. It can, there Definitely. can be some benefit. Mm -hmm. So that's really exciting. Do you see just dogs in your practice? Mm -hmm. uh, we have... A, a, we've had a, a couple cats, and then we work with the emergency clinic cat who hangs out there, and he's on a weight loss program. I see. Oh, so yeah, weight loss is a big one. for that as well. Okay, sounds like I need to come see you, too. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, get me I should probably walk again. on the treadmill. Yeah, I like it. I like it. So, so this is something, these are things that people can do at home with their dogs, but you also have specialty services that you offer there in your clinic. Talk to us a little bit about some of the things that um, veterinarians might refer their patients over to you for. We get a wide variety of referrals, things from like post-surgical uh, injuries. We have a lot of dogs that are post-knee surgery tearing out, tearing out their cruciate ligament, so it's called a CCL in a dog. Um, so they go to a surgeon or they have a mobile surgeon come to their clinic. Um, they do a repair and to get them back recovered, they send them out for physical or rehabilitation. Um, we see a lot of geriatric patients that are having trouble getting up and down. You know, quality of life is the question. And so, you know, they're happy and they're eating and they just want to cuddle but they just can't get out and go for that walk like they used to love or you know go for as long playing ball at the park and we can make a huge difference with that um, you know you can always give pain medication from your veterinarian which you know is something that they have on hand all the time but other modalities that we offer like laser therapy or hydrotherapy um, massage things like that um, can be extra beneficial to keep your pet going longer and longer um, that was part of the reason Julie started rehabilitation I mean so I've been a regular veterinarian for a long time and the frustration with seeing some of these older pets and just being able to give them this pill and then adding on that pill and you know pain has many different pathways and so we we attack it but then we get to the point where there's just nothing else we can do and then it's really frustrating because you have this older dog and everything is great but it just needs to be able to move and so the water the underwater treadmill really just makes a difference in how how these dogs move and it's it's kind of amazing so give me an example if I have an older dog and he's mm -hmm. getting getting a little bit slower how do you introduce them to the water and what does that process look like do they just get put in the water and you just swim or how does it go um, it varies depending on the pet I don't know how many times I have heard my dog doesn't like the water uh, I will say that those dogs are actually probably my favorite because they're the ones who don't want to play and splash and 
and like be ridiculous and throw toys in the water. They just kind of get in and go, oh, okay. Um, but our water is special because um, it's heated, which is a big part of why hydrotherapy is important. So it's between 85 and 90 degrees at all times. Um, and that helps the body perfuse uh, blood and things like that into the muscles, which help them relax. It's kind of like sitting in a hot tub. Sure. You warm up those muscles, you uh, heat up collagen, which help things relax and be more elastic, which makes mobility a lot more simple when you're stiff and sore. Yeah. Um, it helps give them extra what we call biofeedback. So for those older dogs that are stiff, they tend to want to scuff their feet on the ground. Okay. Um, and so then they're, they lose that muscle memory. They can't quite pick up their feet like they're supposed to. So having the water giving them external feedback to where their limbs are helps them remember to pick their feet up really gotcha. high and use those muscles way they should be using them, not because their joints are stiff. And that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, sure. so it's a great thing for pain. It's a great thing for um, neurofeedback. It's a great thing for extra muscle use. The water gives them about twice as much resistance as it does on land. Um, and it helps them really pick up their feet really high. Most people always say, oh, my dog looks like one of those Clydesdale horses. They right. pick their feet up really high. Because the tank is, is transparent, so yeah, you can yeah, really yeah. watch Yeah, yeah, it's the glass movement. on all sides, so you can see everything from the front, from the back, from the sides, which and, is my favorite part. And you, you have a background in animal behavior and training, so yeah. I'm sure that you're also rewarding the dog the more they're trying. Oh, and yeah, them. definitely. So I usually tell people it's about three times before their dog really starts to enjoy the therapy. The first time, you know, it's all about the food. We always tell people, like, don't feed them. Because if your dog's I'm on a hungry. diet, come yeah. hungry. Like, hungry. the diet's not going to happen today. <laughs> It'll happen next time, I promise, but not today. Um, so there's a lot of food. We have toys, balls, squeaky things, lots of love. Uh, the owners are always in the room with us. Um, that is so important. They want to walk, and they want mom and dad to reassure them that they're going to be okay, be okay for sure. you know and it's so important for the owner to be a part of the therapy because yeah. that's how they know what to do at home because just like you or I you know you can go to the gym once a week or twice a week or even to the physical therapist once or twice a week but if you're not keeping up with your things at home it's not as beneficial so it's right. important for them to be there and understand how what they're doing at home is benefiting their pet as well as you know how to keep doing right. it at home for but sure the dogs do really well it's a little scary getting in we have a little ramp um, so they can walk up um, the, I feel like the worst part is probably the the noise from the machine when you hit the you know the fill button it kind of goes right. boosh, and, and they kind of oh where's it coming from they kind of look around but they do really well lots of cookies lots of attention lots of encouragement lots of positive you know it's okay it's good we're so excited um, so is that the only the only therapeutic modality that you offer there or are there other things that you do too no, we offer uh, laser therapy, therapeutic ultrasound, and uh, electrical stimulation therapy, as well as therapeutic exercise. Okay, great. So those other modalities are, you just, how do you select the therapy? I guess that's your role, right? You, how do you select mm -hmm. which therapy is going to be beneficial for that particular pet? It depends pet? on what our, what our purpose is. So things come in immediate post-surgery. Um, there's a lot of pain involved, and so we're going to do everything we can to first control the pain. So the laser is really good for helping pain control, helping things to start to heal a little bit faster. The ultrasound is great for muscle injuries and being able to do some deep heat into places. And then if it's really post um, you know, immediately post surgery, the electrical stimulation just kind of uh, reminds muscles to go again. We're just, you know, we're kind of giving them a little bit of a Stimulation. Stimulation, exactly. <laughs> and it just reminds the muscles to go. And uh, we've seen some pretty significant improvements in a fairly short time. Fantastic. And so, yeah, and then these are just things that we do in addition to what the regular veterinarian is already doing, whatever pain management and other things that they're already doing. So you work really closely with the consulting veterinarian to make sure that they're involved in the process and they're aware of what's happening and there's messages we, back and forth. We, tr we try to, yes. Yeah, we fantastic. Really I'm sure people are, locally are really excited to have you here because you're the first rehabilitation um, um, company in the right. area, right? We're hoping so. Yeah, yeah, I like it. We're hoping to work with them very much. Fantastic. Well, that's exciting. And so we have a bunch of equipment here. I'm sure Zeke is super excited to show us all of the things. And I would I would love to be able to um, have you guys explain to the viewers at home how each of these things works, maybe some of the things that they can do at home to help strengthen their own pets. What are the, some of the safety issues in doing these sorts of things? And, and so can we move into that? Yeah, definitely. That would be great. So I'm going to just, Sarah, I'm going to 
going to turn it over to you and let okay. you do most of the teaching and talking from this okay. point. Okay, sounds good. Okay, yeah. so one of the really basic things yeah. that is great for your pet at home is core strength. Um, and so good. we do that with some really yeah. basic exercises. Uh, one of them is a sit stand, stand. or um, a puppy squat, basically. And so what you do is asking your pet to sit. do something simple, like sit, and then to stand up. Zeke stand. Good. Now, the important thing to remember about a sit stand is um, it's all about the rear end. So yeah. most dogs, when they sit, they sit nice and square, which is great. Stand. But then when they Good. stand up, they want to use their front legs and pull themselves forward. Mm -hmm. And so what that does is it uses a lot of chest stand. and upper body, Good. but we want them really sit. focusing on their stand. rear end. So when we ask them to stand, we stand. basically Good. make sure their front feet can't move and they just lift their rear end. So gotcha. they're focusing on just their quads, Good. hamstrings, gluteal stand. muscles, lower abdomen to Good. push themselves up and down. One way to make sure they do this is to put them on a confined space where they have to keep their legs kind of underneath them that they can't pull themselves forward. Another thing I have clients do is, you know, when you're sitting in the recliner at home, have your dog come up to you, put their head in your lap, ask them to sit. And then if you slowly reach over and touch their rear foot or tap on their lower abdomen, most of them will go, ooh, why are you touching me? And they'll pop their rear end right back up. Oh, very good. That's and an so, easy one to do yeah, at home. Yeah, it's a super, super easy one to do so can teach their pet just to get into yeah. that position yeah. mm -hmm. without using those front legs to come forward. Exactly, because they can't go anywhere. So it's a super easy yeah. way to start. Um, one of the other things we do is uh, sit pretty. So Zeke is doing them all on the wobble board because he, he's advanced. Yeah, he's yeah, he's a I very him, young, healthy, <laughs> and when I happy saw him, boy. When I saw him come in, I immediately I saw you guys kind of fiddle around, just getting him warmed up in the room, and I was just impressed with how muscular tired. and strong he is. Like yeah. he is extremely aware of where all of his feet are and the muscles just are there. You We've know? been working with him a lot since we opened SOAR um, just so we could kind of get used to using all of our new equipment and okay. get used to how to use Eight. our space because we have a smaller space. Um, and Zeke is okay. an agility dog. Good. Julie has a lot of fun doing agility with him. Good. So she wants to make Good sure he boy. doesn't hurt himself. Yeah. You know, as his doctor, she wants to make sure he stays okay. as healthy as possible. For sure. Um, so for the sit pretty, one of the things you want to do is get them again in a space where they can't really back up or get away from you. Sit. Um, so putting their rear in the corner, in a wall in the corner is a great place to Good do it. Kind of like teaching your kid to do um, a handstand, you know, you put them up against the wall so they can't Good fall boy. over. Um, so putting his rear in the corner and then asking him to Good just boy. put the treat in front of his face, kind of step towards him and pull upwards so that he wants to kind of reach for it. And then if he has the wall as balance, he can Good. kind of lift himself up. The goal is to make sure he stays square and on his haunches on the ground though, because if he stands see how his rear kind of stays on the floor. Yeah. If he gets up on his legs, he starts to engage more his hips and his quads, which is great, but I want this exercise to focus on his core on here. Yeah, for sure. So I want him stable and just using his back. To so this is a trick up. that we often teach in pet dog classes. Who knew that it was going to be beneficial for me? Exactly. <laughs> and one of the tips that I always give people with teaching this trick is don't start with trying to do the whole thing, right? Yeah. It's okay to, to reward them for just that little bit of stretch. Yeah, just a little bit, a little little bit at a time. And, and eventually they they can they can build the strength. It's just like me sitting, somebody stretch. telling me to sit down and do a you know hundred sit ups. Not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. Not today. <laughs> me either. Maybe after a few months if I had a personal trainer. <laughs> right. But exactly. Don't expect too much. Stretch. Yeah. Nothing. Out, nothing happens right away. <laughs> it all takes time for Good. sure. Um, some of the other things you can do besides just working their core are some body awareness exercises. One of them is actually stretching. So him being able to know how to stretch is knowing which way to move his muscles. So being aware of his front end versus his back end. Um, so having him do something simple, like following the treat down like he were going to lie down but not completely, asks him to stretch his abdominal muscles here as well as his hamstrings. His hamstrings, or dog's hamstrings in general, are one of the hardest muscles to stretch. Um, so teaching them to bow is also another way we do this. It's a great way to start stretching those muscles. Good stretch. Good, Good fantastic. Job, so those Zeke. are easy things. Also doubles as a trick. Again, very exactly. exciting. Right? So you Bow. Have... So it goes both ways. <laughs> Let me tell you, having a training background has been more than helpful for this career. I don't honestly have no idea how I would have gotten as far as I have without knowing. I mean, how do you convince a dog to stand on a giant purple peanut? Right. You... <laughs> 
<laughs> well, we'll get to that in a minute. We'll get right? to that. We so will. With this, is this is this a special wobble board that you purchased for this purpose? Is there something similar that people can use at home, or yes. how can they what, how can they get the wobble with with a safe with a safe uh, piece okay. of equipment? Yeah. So my favorite thing to tell clients is start with something simple like a couch cushion. Okay. So that soft floor has more give than your solid floor at home. Um, going to the beach, walking on sand, having a sand pit, something like that okay. works great. Um, but as you get more advanced, things like an air mattress. And then you can inflate and deflate the mattress depending on how much stability you want them to have. I like it. When I'm working with horses, uh, we do clicker training with horses mm -hmm. and we, we use a giant mattress that we found at the side of the highway. <laughs> right. We picked it up, hold, hold it to the barn, and we use it to teach them some balance yeah. and to teach yeah. them um, those core, how to tuck in. Yep. And, and, and everything all those together. things. So that's so. If you have large animals, this is something yep. you, you can, can do. use it the same way. Yep, that's fantastic. Yeah. So okay. cavalettis are something super simple. Yeah. And for those of you that do agility with your dogs, mm -hmm. probably think they look really familiar, like agility jumps. Uh, agility dogs are some of my okay. hardest dogs to get to do cavalettis appropriately because they all want to jump over them. Right. Um, it's just a giant broad it's jump. It's just a giant broad <laughs> jump. Exactly. So cavalettis are super important for leg awareness and what we call proprioception. So the ability to pick your feet up and flop them over and place them on the ground properly, as well as active range of motion, being able to move that limb through full flexion and extension on their own. Um, so cavalettis are generally placed two to four inches off the ground to start, or if you've got a dachshund, a little low rider, maybe on right. the ground. Um, and then they're placed, you measure from their elbow to the floor and that's yeah. how far apart a standard distance is because that's their gait, their, their stride length. Okay. So that's the, the most narrow you would want the poles and we want our, at least four of them. So we, we got four legs, we need four poles, four even steps. Gotcha. What we're looking for is one step in between each pole. So he has to go fast enough that he can go one foot in between each pole as he goes through. Okay. Let's see if he can do it. There we there go, we that go. was better. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, so we want one step in between because that is a normal gait pattern. And the ultimate goal of rehabilitation is pain management and normal motion. Gotcha. And then you can work on speed and muscle mass, but you have to have pain-free normal Good motion boy. first. And so these are a super simple exercise to help condition them into making sure they're not stumbling over their own feet or getting too excited. We see a lot of dogs that are just like, yeah. and, and just want to jump too around fast, way too fast and they thing, just stumble yeah. and stuff and that causes injury. And so if you take one of those dogs and put them in a sport to get the energy out, they're honestly more likely to injure themselves. I see, because they don't even know where their back feet are. They don't. Cool. Uh, the, I don't know where my bum is disease is something. Right. Right, we, right. We, we talk about that. We talk about, about that in in the puppy classes that I teach too. We talk about using just a ladder, just laying a ladder yep. down and letting the puppy, you know, climb through the little rungs on the ladder. And yep. although it might not be the exact correct distance, they are yep. starting to it's learn where those back feet are. Exactly. Yeah, it is a total sure. body awareness. Cool. Um, so people can make these at home using broomsticks or yeah. Um, so I've had a lot of people use um, just wood dowels inside uh, fencing okay. or. Um, uh, what is a gutter use, gutters like old gutter things I've had people like put them on their sides depending on how tall your dog is and how tall you need off the ground um, the little dogs rolled up towels work really well um, anything you have just sitting at home I've even seen people just use egg crate like the egg crate foam yeah. just mm -hmm. to set in their hallway and so anytime the dog walks back and forth down the pool hallway noodles. pool noodles another use for pool noodles <laughs> we use pool noodles in rehab all the time <laughs> Tell us Good. about these purple balls here. So these are balance discs. It's uh -oh. very similar to like a human BOSU ball. Uh -oh. uh, the flat side on one side and inflated on the other. And uh -oh. again, you can inflate and deflate Good. them as yeah, you right. need for um, how much wobble you want them to have. Um, so as we started out using our core and then we work on our limb awareness, then we're actually gonna try and separate the body into two separate entities, knowing where his rear is versus right. where his front is. Okay. So we're getting things a little bit harder. Um, we're also asking him to be on two yeah. different Good. Unstable surfaces, so right? I can he see can't his, just go from side to side. His every muscle in his body is activated on so, these. Yeah, it's so the nice thing about Z2. He's so in shape; you can easily see right. everything kind of Good. go. So Finish we that. use these for Good. big dogs, for little dogs. Good. They're Good. great. Um, 
depending on how inflated they are, determines how much they move. Okay. So they're he's kind of medium lighter. inflated and he's a heavy dog, so he lighter. can push into them enough right. that most of what he's doing is really active weight shifting side to side, front to back. If we had it super stand? inflated where he couldn't really push stand. on it, it's gonna move in actually like almost like an earthquakey type shape. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna move, use a different yeah. type of muscle fiber. So you have slow twitch muscle fibers and fast twitch muscle fibers, and they do different stand? things for the dog. One Good. does um, like balance, and one does Lighter. speed. And so that's Good those dog. quick twitch muscle fibers are great for, for speed. And so depending on what we're working on for that dog, we can inflate and deflate equipment depending on what they need to work on. Um, or if I have a dog who has Stand. bad rear end Good. balance, but pretty decent front end balance, I can inflate one and deflate the other gotcha. and use them differently. So how would we manifest this at home? What, what are some things, if we don't have this special equipment, are there similar things that we can do for them? Good so thing. similar things like the wobble board, having the air mattress or um, the couch cushions, oh. but then maybe oh. asking him to do two different things. So like oh. maybe a small okay. flat pillow versus okay. like a really inflated pillow or a memory foam pillow versus an air mattress. Okay. Like they're gonna give you different feelings. Different feelings. Yeah. Um, different textures are super important. I don't know if you, you can kind of see, these Good. are flat right now, but on the other side is knobby, like the physio roll. Okay. Um, um, so it gives them extra feedback, giving Stop. them extra textures, and so the, how their nerves respond um, makes a big difference. Okay, sure. Back up. And so Back if up. you have a dog with Good. a neurologic dysfunction, it's great to give them different feedback at different times. So the feeling that he gets uh -oh. when he's wa shifting weight onto the foot with the knobs oh. versus the weight foot he's uh -oh. not shifting weight onto Good. are going to be super important for feedback to his brain. Gotcha. Very great. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh oh. All right, and we have uh -oh. one more big old final finish piece of equipment over here. Let's go take a look at that. Okay. Step up. Good there boy. There we go. Good boy. So this yeah. or these are our physio rolls. So or peanuts, most people call them. Um, these are used Good. for many up. things in rehabilitation. Good we boy. can use them for stretching, where we actually have Stand. the dogs lay on them and relax one way or the other, so you can get like traction on their back or specific limbs. Okay. Um, but we also use them for muscle strengthening. This is kind of the extreme of everything else all put together. Um, most of the time when we put them all together, we kind of stack them up small to large. Um, I call it the mountain climb. So for dogs that are getting ready, that are gonna Good. be doing things like hiking um, and need to be able to Good. jump can over tree stumps and things like that, or dogs Stand. that are agility Stand. and doing fly ball, Stand. for example, and need to turn quickly Stand. and bounce off of things and push off Good. and jump over. Stand there. Peanuts are a great way to do that. We are getting um, the individual movement from Good. individual pieces of equipment like right we here. did with the discs. Yeah. We're getting texture, Good. but we're also getting a lot of core Good. stability balance things like mm -hmm. the Step roll. Up. And then as Step we up. ask him to walk up and down them, he has to pick up his feet and place them appropriately on different levels, uh, different steps basically. We can stabilize them with numerous different things. Uh, we have the Back paw up. pods, which are great for targeting. Um, we have the we use Back the up. other equipment to stabilize. <laughs> Zeke can go up all the way on the physio roll and balance himself. We tend to always be pretty close to them, making sure the peanut is stable. Uh, Zeke is a little bit of a wild card sometimes and likes to kind of throw him his body around. So they wobble a little bit more with him Step than up. they do with most dogs. Um, or at least most of our normal patients who are coming in for recovery of some kind. Right. Um, but one of the really cool things Julia's taught him to do is to be able to walk forward and backwards uh, with the physio roll. So he's getting some uh, good limb awareness as well as um, balance mm -hmm. to move himself around. Yeah. Um, he's really good at the backup. Uh, which is great for using different muscles and for hind end awareness because he's using his back end to back lead himself. Um, but he's back also up. in what I like to call a puppy plank. So, if, you know, planks are like people who like okay. hold their core really straight and hold themselves up, which I don't think I could ever do. Uh -oh. um, okay. But okay. for dogs who are constantly okay. on all four, how do you make them yeah. do a plank, right? right? So, if you think about it, we as humans stand directly up and dogs can't. So, that's their version of a plank to stand okay. up and to hold themselves in that standing position. So, this is a great way for him Back to up. engage all Back those up. core muscles, kind of like the sit stand prepared him for, oh um, but then to do it while moving as well. Gotcha. So that's um, really exciting. So is this this is probably something that would be really difficult to replicate at home. We probably need to have that kind of equipment, or do you have ideas? Um, you'd be so, you'd be surprised. There are lots of different ways. Um, you can use a regular yoga ball. 
Okay. You don't have to have a physio role. Getting a big enough yoga ball, if you have a big long dog, is important. Um, but I have a dachshund and I have a yoga ball, and she does great on that. That's where um, we started was just a regular old ball at home. Okay. Yeah, no, not on top of it. You know, okay. again, going back to the safety thing, you want to make sure that it's really stable and easy. And um, and, and stable is the big okay. thing. And so you're not asking a little dog to climb straight up there. Um, but he started just putting his front paws on a uh, regular exercise ball, and then I would have him walk around it. So with his back feet on the ground, oh, he would just okay. walk around it, and he got very comfortable with the ball. In fact, he asks to play on the ball many times in the evening. <laughs> okay, so that's his exercise and entertainment exactly. all in one package. Exactly. So and you just sit there on the couch and just feed him cookies for it, doing well, all the things. Yeah, I like it. Stands and stuff. Yes, Easy to do at home. Easy. This is something yeah, that's fantastic, right? for sure. Um, you can do planks on your couch, having them put their front feet on the couch, which is something they probably do to come up to you to say hi in the anyway, evenings anyway. Yeah. Um, and you can make them more difficult by asking them to yeah, shift sure. their weight. So having yeah, a dog right. that's sitting right. with their feet on the ground and their yeah. feet on you and then Good. you lean Good. and shift Good. their hips back yeah. and forth Fantastic. or just kind of push them at different angles Thank so you. they have to wiggle and keep their balance or maybe even picking up yeah. one front yeah. leg yeah. so they're balanced on both yeah. back legs and only one front Good. leg and Stay. shifting it around. So there's really a lot we can do at home. Oh yeah, I'm, there's so much stuff. I'm, I'm really happy and thankful you guys were able to come in today. We're just about out of time. So I wanna make sure that we share the resources um, on our screen to make sure people can get in touch with you or have veterinarians Excellent. reach out to you if they have patients that could benefit from rehabilitation. So we'll put that up on the screen for you. Perfect. And thanks again, Dr. Rowley and Sarah for coming uh, and showing us all of these things. And Zeke, thank you for coming and doing all your workout right here in front of us. I'd love to see you down at the shelter, uh, Willamette Humane Society on Salem, in Salem on Turner Road. Come on down where you just might meet your next number one fan. Hi, buddy. Hi, honey.